Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the D-Rich Show, where we talk anything and everything crypto. Now, here's your host, D-Rich. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the D-Rich Show. This is D-Rich, and today is Friday. May 28th, 2021. Happy Friday, everyone. I hope that uh, everyone is doing well. And again, that, that this video finds you in good health, good spirits, and good energy. And um, today, guys, we're going to go over some different uh, information. I talked to you uh, yesterday about basil um, and what that means uh, moving forward. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that today. We're also going to be talking a little bit about some precious metals. Um primarily um, all throughout this uh, video. Um, no, sorry guys, no XRP news, no XLM news, no uh, crypto news. Um, but we will go over the coin market cap as we usually do. Um, again, um, if you guys are new to the channel, thank you for um, subscribing to the channel. And for those folks who have been here, um, again, I appreciate you guys always watching the videos and I hope that you always enjoy the information. And guys, feel free to always comment um, or make suggestions or uh, make your opinion known how I can actually do better for you all and what type of information uh, you want to hear. <coughs> Excuse me. And if there's anything that you would like me to cover on any of the videos, whether it be a short video on how to transfer uh, from one exchange to another, and I can actually do that live for you. Um, not live, but, you know, live on a, making a video for you doing it. Um, so if anything that you need help with, um, feel free to um, ask those questions um, because I'm not afraid to help. And I want <clears throat> to make sure that I offer, um, you know, the best advice possible. And again, always, guys, I'm never here for financial advice. I'm only here to um, give um, information um, that would try to help you lead uh, to um, another path or help you in um, your financial decisions uh, when it comes to um, investing in cryptocurrency and how to help you um, become successful with it. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and get into the coin market cap today as Bitcoin's dominance is at 42.9 percent. Ethereum is at 18.4 and uh, we <clears throat> see a little dip in the market as Bitcoin is dropped to 36,200. Um, I'm still at number one. Uh, they're leading the market. And again, whatever um, Bitcoin decides to do, pretty much the market follows. Not necessarily all of the cryptocurrencies, but, you know, most of them. Um, and we need to uh, find some separation with some other cryptocurrencies. And hopefully we have that come up here soon. Ethereum is at $2,507, down over 10%. <clears throat> and we got Binance Coin. <clears throat> excuse me there, at 331, and uh, you got my dogs barking in the background, so please forgive me if you hear them, uh, I think that the front door is open, so they got people walking by, but anyway, Cardano is at $1.55, down 9% in the last 24 hours, XRP, folks, yesterday was 99 cents, it dropped 10% <clears throat> off of that, so um, you have a great buying opportunity still sitting at number six at uh, 89 cents, almost 90 cents. But again, um, if it goes a little bit lower, you better believe um, I'll be making a, another move into um, XRP um, at a lower price. But anyway, Dogecoin is at uh, 31 cents, still holding uh, that uh, line there, um, 29, 30, 31 cents. So. Um, you know, is holding its resistance at that level at number seven. And then you got USD coin again, bouncing up. It was still at $22 billion on the market cap, but it's actually moving up um, as we got um, dot moving into the number nine spot at uh, 2198 there and Uniswap rounding out that top 10 at 2706. And that ICP is just uh, getting battered and bruised, isn't it? And this thing just popped up out of nowhere, just sucking up liquidity and uh, just sucking up space pretty much. So um, I might be wrong about it at a later point, but, you know, I'm just calling for what it is and what I've seen over 
uh, the last uh, week and a half or so since it was dropped into, it was like an airdrop into the top five, all right? So anyway, guys, uh, market, again, is taking a little beating. Um, buying opportunities all over the joint. So um, if you want to go ahead and hit that, uh, make sure you, uh, yeah, it's, it's on fire right now, if you get what I mean. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and move on out of that because I don't want to make too many uh, jokes that might be just dry sense of humor, I guess. Anyway, this is coming from the uh, Swiss Info. Um, the WEF cancels 2021 annual meeting in Singapore. And um, the World Economic Forum has been forced to cancel its flagship annual meeting um, that was due to be staged in Singapore this summer so anyway guys i only wanted to report on this because i find it very interesting um that they've been forced uh you know i look at the word forced to cancel their flagship um annual meeting um not because of any of this okay it's not because of this you know they want to report on it they're not reporting the truth but anyway so they're canceling that. That just kind of let you know. I believe what it was in August. Um, let me see here. I believe it's coming up in August. Yep, August right here. It's posting posting um, the event um, until August, but I don't think it's going to get off the ground. So um, that's just that. I'll leave that in um, the description if you want to go over it. It's nothing major, but you just wanted to point out, point that out because these guys usually have this thing um, faithfully where they talk about the Great Reset. And um, speaking of the Great Reset, we're going to talk about that today. And um, first, I wanted to talk about this. Um, being that we are on the cusp of Memorial Day, um, I think that it's uh, appropriate to, uh, you know, give my thanks and appreciation to those who served in uh, the military or armed forces or um, anything to try to protect our country and those um, that try to uh, protect other countries and good faith. Um, but, you know, hopefully all that stuff um, comes to um, an end where we don't have to deal with that. But anyway, um, that's not here nor there. I wanted to make sure I point that out before um, we get started with this um, because I know it's a sensitive issue um, to some. Um, I apologize if it is, and it um, invokes any um, negative feedback or flack. But I just wanted to make sure um, we call we talked about this because some people are on one side and some people are on the other side. I know what side I fall on, and um, this right here is how much gold was under the World Trade Center complex, and this is coming from the American Free Press, and this was written August twenty seventh, two thousand and eleven, and as you can see. You got bundles of uh, gold there. Um, but let's go ahead and read the article. Earlier this year, a coin dealership ran a television ad for the 10th anniversary 9-11 commemorative coin. That was, was actually clad in uh, pure silver. Um, recovered from vaults beneath the ashes of ground zero. And that commercial provoked retired New York Police Department Captain DePrisco to tell the New York's Daily Post. Our news in late January, that's just poor, pure bullshit. And in the aftermath of the devastating um, attacks on 9-11, DePrisco was assigned to the Office of Emergency uh, Management to assist in recovering precious metals buried in the two-story vault beneath the rubble of the World Trade Center Building 4 and transfer it to another vault at the Brooklyn Naval Yard World. He said that the operation began on October 16, 2011, or excuse me, 2001, and lasted for two days. And he remin reminisces about the moment he walked into the vault. He said walking into that vault was like a scene out of the James Bond, John Bond movie Goldfinger. Endless neat stacks of gold, silver, and platinum bars, which is a half a billion dollars worth. Okay, and um, let's go down here further. And according to a uh, November 1st article in the London Times, the Comex Metals Trading Division of the New York Mercantile Exchange 
kept about 3,800 gold bars, weighing 12 tons and worth more than 100 million in the vaults and the buildings, apparently building five, the basement. And Coleman's almost uh, held almost 800,000 ounces of gold there on behalf of others with the value of 220 million. And it also held more than 102 million ounces of silver worth an estimated uh, 430 million. The goal which was discovered was being transported through the basement of the building on the morning of September 11th. Recovery workers reached a service tunnel and discovered a 10-wheel truck and a number of cars that had been crushed, falling by steel. Um, the sources said that the goal was found in a delivery tunnel under um, World Trade Center 5. So anyway, guys, what we're getting at here, there was um, a lot of uh, gold and silver um, that was removed from uh, underneath the um, rubbish um, um, under there that would have led them to believe that there was an operation that took this away because as we know um, there was uh, Nasara that was supposed to be announced the day of which was actually prevented um, from um, actually happening. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and get into the Basel 3 gold, the dollar, and the great reset, which we have been talking about. This is coming from investing.com. And um, Basel 3, as outlined in the previous two articles, could lead to a dramatic change in gold prices with a serious fallout in other market sectors with June 28th, 2021, approaching where the new NSFR standards become implemented. We look at how the dollar will react and whether the Basel III implementation is a front for a much bigger macro event. The most important characteristic of Basel III, the NSFR implemented by the BIS, which we talked about yesterday, commences on June 28, 2021. The LBMA, who have tried to successfully push back for years, have been granted an extension to this again. However, this will likely no matter not matter one iota as banks and countries for that matter are already signing up for compliance therefore um, while the extension has been granted to lbma with the rest of the 63 countries involved um, it is hardly an allowance to um, have any exemptions to the rules and uh, when they consider the fallout this could have um, in this juncture, there are some analysts that believe that this could be the end of the dollar. Many still believe the dollar to be on its knees by the end of 2021, regardless of Basel III. At some point, that still cling on to a stature as the world reserve currency, and it won't be allowed to fail. Gold is money, and there's an argument to say that it is a currency at its value and is traded against the U.S. dollar. If you buy gold, you are effectively shorting the dollar or betting its value will decrease. Whilst there is obviously more to it than that, fiat currency has a, continues to lose purchasing power over the years. Gold has always been a hedge or security against the dollar, debasing and inflation. So um, you can read the rest of this uh, stuff and... Um, what they, you know, are trying to do is, again, try to get these banks on board um, with, you know, if they have enough um, assets to back up, you know, their assets to make sure that they balance their sheets so that they don't have these problems uh, with inflation, um, you know, and things like that where, you know, the value of the currency uh, depreciates. We don't, we don't want any of that. So this is where we had it and you know june 28th keep that in your uh, notebook because um, that will be a day that we will look back upon and say well this is when all the things change for us and i do believe um you know we are getting close it may be sooner i don't know but i'm thinking that um you know with everything that we are seeing politically um auditing and things like that i think that um we're getting close. 
Um, so returning to the upcoming event back in 2018, the World Global Council stated that the central banks, in response to the Basel III rule changes, added 651 tons of gold to their reserves in 2018. Um, this was a 50-year record. Bear in mind that the time Basel III rules were scheduled to commence the following year. Before the Basel III NSFR rules, bank holding gold was costly and not particularly worthwhile as a Tier 3 asset. Now, a Tier 1 asset gold is attractive to hold because it can and will be used as a security to, be, to back lending and potentially offset debt. Currently, uh, for years, the Tier 1 assets have been consistent of Treasury bonds and cash. Fiat, as mentioned above, loses purchasing power over time, and the Treasury bonds comes with other problems. Gold, however, carries no counterparty risk. So, guys, I mean, if you guys are into gold, silver, precious metals, um, like I am, you know what? I am all about it, okay? And, again, we've talked about this uh, agenda um, that they wanted to push this build back better model. Okay. Um, they also call for a Bretton Woods moment in quarter four, 2020. And it would make sense, wouldn't it? And small banks that can't afford to stack gold close down, leaving the cartel off of the big boys to set the minimum gold price. And the higher price of the gold, the less debt the banks have. And it's like monetary magic policy is so brazen. You can see it happening. So, guys. <clears throat> Um, by the time Basel IV rules kick in in January 2023, gold could have had its second re-evaluation event. So um, can you imagine a minimum price of gold not just once but twice? Some gold analysts have been touting this scenario for a while. And uh, guys, when I say like re-evaluation, that means whatever is attached to gold and if you believe Bitcoin is going to be backed by gold. Or if you think Ethereum is going to be backed by gold, okay, great, no problem. You have your belief. My belief is XRP is gold, XLM is silver, and I can go on about the other precious metals. That is just my firm belief that XRP is the one that is going to be backed by gold. And again, this is where you're going to see uh, the price appreciation of XRP. Um, explode not just one time but two times and again most folks are not going to be willing to hold on to that second reevaluation okay that second reevaluation which is in 2023 okay I put put the dates out there for you okay so that you can keep a hold of your XRP all right yes in the initial phase will we take some profit you better believe it okay because again XRP can go from, I don't know, a dollar to $2,000 like that, okay? And I'm just saying it because I know, um, I believe in the uh, research that everyone has done over the years um, and the event um, to remove Bitcoin off the scene um, is playing out right before our very eyes. You got Jamie Dimon talking about stay away from Bitcoin. Yes, it can be FUD, Okay. No one ever believes these folks, okay? But maybe sometime they have to come around and they start, have to start telling the truth um, because of their illicit activities. Let's just keep it at that, okay? Um, Basil 3 and Gold, let me just go ahead and read a little bit of this. And um, I don't want to go over uh, too much because uh, there will be new rules for banks. Okay, previously banks could hold gold in their balance sheets in the form of unallocated paper gold contracts without holding physical gold in tangible form. These paper contracts were considered good as gold when it came to determining how much capital a bank needed to maintain on its balance sheet. Under the old rules, there was little incentive to hold physical gold as it was only valued at 50% for reserve purposes. Uh, now, Basel rules move physical gold from being considered a Tier 3 asset to being considered a Tier 1, which allows physical gold in bullion form to be counted at 100% value before the reserve purposes. Gold is unallocated paper contracts will no longer be considered an equal asset, 
and for this reason, banks using paper forms of gold to help meet reserve requirements will have to convert those positions to physical metal or risk becoming too undercapitalized to continue to function. So on this, in my personal belief, some banks as you know them, they will not exist. You'll go down the street, hey, I thought that was a bank over there. Those, those things won't happen. You'll start seeing more like pop-up shops or cafes or something like that where it's more like people friendly um, where you know you can go in there and you can actually get something out of actually walking inside of a banking type of institution and as we um, move to like Visa, MasterCard transactions, uh, cashless transactions, tap transactions um, and stuff like that as far as peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, you know peer to bank or whatnot, however you want to transact, I believe um, those banks that do not get in line to um, adapt to um, the um, everyday person like yourself who needs a bank that can't run a bank or do not have enough uh, resources or capital to, you know, be a bank. Um, in other words, they have to get in line with uh, what we the people want. So this is why cryptocurrency is important. And this is why the correct cryptocurrencies are important when it comes to um, regulations, when it comes to being attached to uh, this tier one asset, which is gold. And as we've been saying, make sure you get your ducks in a row. Okay. And we'll be talking about um, the silver market, the gold market as well here in a little bit. But most um, importantly, what I wanted to point out really on this article is that uh, they're going to be vanishing um, premiums and manipulation and at this point premiums over spot might disappear forever as the spot price become nearly meaningless physical gold and silver will rule the roost okay physical gold and silver will rule the roost okay there's no way around it there's no um there, there's no, okay so you can't say Bitcoin go um, Bitcoin cash and Bitcoin is going to rule the roost. Okay, there's no other um, faster payment mechanisms besides XRP and XLM. So XRP and XLM will rule the roost. I'm sorry to put it out there. Don't hate on me for saying it. There has recently been an effort to squeeze silver prices higher by what appears to be a grassroots movement of investors purchasing physical silver. This is coming at a time when there is an official movement in the same direction in gold market by means of Basel III implementation continuing this year. As these efforts combine, they seem to reinforce the notion that physical possession is the way for, for precious metals communities. Another benefit for the owner of precious metals will be the absence of monthly metal smashing done by those trying to manipulate prices lower as options expire periods get close when banks hold physical metal as a primary reserve asset the benefit from uh, more from gold's rise than from a temporary drop in the price and increased gold prices will allow banks to reduce debt and other liability on their balance sheets putting them in better financial positions excuse me uh, this will also help create new reality that aligns the interests of inter individual physical gold and silver purchasers with the interests of the large institutions holding this silver or gold. And in this world, there may only be two prices for gold and silver, the price to purchase and the price to sell. Gone will be the days when you also have to wonder how much above or below spot price you must pay or receive to complete the purchase or sale of a precious metal. So, folks, you got that, okay? No more manipulation in the markets, okay? And what we see Elon Musk doing is he's um, doing this uh, in, in a way to show that the market can be manipulated. And um, when you can manipulate the market, you know, folks like myself or yourself, you can see um, what it does. Uh, it drastically changes the market um, one way or another. And that's what we are attempting to get out of the market. Um, so I think that what he's doing is actually um, 
putting a spotlight on it, whether you, you like the guy or not. So anyway, here's um, basal one, two, three, and four. I thought there was five, um, but um, I was wrong. So um, forgive me for poorly reporting that. I'm trying to understand basal one, two, three, and four. Um, here you I'll go. This is coming from um, advisoryhq.com, uh, and you can go ahead and read this. It's very lengthy, folks. So if you want to read more about it, understand where we're headed and the stuff like that, the basal committee on banking supervision you can read that and then you can go down here to look at uh, all of the different um, things to understand basal, basal regulations and the best way to make harder financial concepts easier is through simple definitions feel free to jump to this definition key anytime throughout reading this guide of basal one through four asset something that is owned that has value and can be used to pay a debt or commitment capital capital is simply wealth and this could be used as money or other assets and risk weighted assets this term refers to how many asset banks must have to prevent or reduce the change or chance of not being able to meet financial obligations and then also liquidity and how much cash assets are available right now and then what are the basal capital requirements and we have one more important definition and when we look through basal one through four we will frequently mention basal capital requirements and to make it um, easier, let's define them. Capital requirements, definition, the amount of financial assets, money, a financial institution like a bank is required by a regulator to hold. In this case of basal capital requirements, that regulator is the BCBS. The purpose of the capital requirement is to make sure that these financial institutions are not at any overwhelming risk of defaulting on their investments and to make sure that they have enough money to operate even if they give withdrawals to their customers. The basal regulations have been changed, altered at different times, which have brought us basal 1, 2, 3, or sorry, 2.53, and now there are talks about a future basal 4, which we'll dive into this topic at the end. Um, so this is basal one what do you need to know i'm not going to go over it all um, because it's, again i don't want to waste too much time on it i want to give you guys some time to read it um, on your um, own time because you guys have already taken um, some time to watch my video um, you know i want to give you guys some personal time to get it to get to it as well and i hope that you go back into the descriptions um, to read some of the information it's very important um, that we follow along on some of this stuff because um, you have to understand how to communicate this when it comes to um, people not understanding if their uh, banks get frozen um, or their assets get um, seized. Not necessarily seized, um, but if they don't, you know, go to the bank and trying to pull out money, there's no ATMs that are going to allow to do that. Then you'll be able to explain kind of what's going on um, to hold tight. But I do believe um, the assets are you know, money that will be in your bank will be safe. Um, and then, you know, as the transition happens, um, again, I do believe um, they'll, you know, offer you pennies on a dollar to exchange all of your uh, fiat currencies, whether you be in one uh, country or the other. Um, I do believe, again, as we have uh, different currencies um, entering to the mainstream um, with, you know, either tracking devices or whatnot, as they want to call it the rainbow currencies um i do, do believe that that will be on a um on the horizon here shortly uh since basel 3 and the basel 3 capital requirements are still not even fully implemented what is basel 4 and as the bank um, world grows and changes quickly some realize that even tighter regulations than those in basel 3 will um, be needed basel 4 uh, will be the response to those needs and basel 4 summary at this point, any ideas associated with Basel 4 are just that, they're ideas. But with that being said, some of the possible requirements in Basel 4 could be a stricter leverage ratio, uh, stricter than Basel 3 uh, leverage ratio, and simple models for calculations, and even more disclosure for transparency among international banks. And then Basel regulations and you, now that you have some basic knowledge about uh, basal one two basal three and potentially basal four 
um, it is time to see exactly what that means for our world today. And of course, if you are in any bank banking or financial line of work or want to be in those fields, understanding these concepts is also vitally important. Um, but for the average consumer, they will play a role as well. Your money is in these banks. Your investments are through these banks. And when they make choices to help lessen risk and increase transparency, through disclosure, your money becomes safer. And many people even suggest that Basel II had a lot to do with the financial crisis that came into the late 2000s. Okay, so in conclusions, now we have the clear understanding of what Basel capital requirements are over the three variations and what Basel IV may add to the picture. And if you are interested in getting more detail, look at each of these accords. You can find the documents laying out Basel II, Basel 2.5, and Basel III for each of the countries under their jurisdiction on Bank of International Sentiments website. So you could go ahead and click that because it's a link right here, folks. And again, um, we're moving forward and we're moving to a timeline um, where um, the people will be liberated and free from the um, banking slavery systems. So anyway, guys, I wanted to go over um, the stock market for today. This is coming from Chinese uh, News Network Business. And this is uh, the Dow Jones is up uh, 101.9 points today, um, over 34,000 points. And the NASDAQ plus 47 points. And then the S&P um, plus 11 and then you got most popular stocks here. Um, you got some um, HP, Ford, Macy's, whatever. I'm not really into the stock market. And if you guys have uh, been um, paying attention to what's been going on with AMC, um, I'm not a trader. But when I see different like flows before they start, um, then, you know, I try to get on. So I try to trade um, options trades. Um, and try to be as successful with them. And again, guys, if you're getting into the stock market, there's always ways to pull money out. Um, you could be a scalper. Um, you could be like a, you know, buy stocks just like you do crypto. I advise against it um, based on the fact that um, the market has never treated me well. Um, but when I do make options trade like I did yesterday and today on this AMC, um, I was able to um, benefit because I stuck to uh, my principles as far as getting in, s setting a t um, price target, and getting out of that as soon as I needed to, and um, learning how to uh, look at the chart, learning how to know when there might be a top um, to get out somewhere close to the top, if not exactly at the top. And today I was able to do that. Yesterday I was able to do that as well. So. Um, that's that and that's what I want to report on when it comes to the stock market and um, we do have oil um, which is commodities um, um, up a little bit but not 0.6 percent and gas obviously is skyrocketing then you got gold at 1903 silver at 28 okay per ounce and then you got corn is at a negative one and again, lastly, guys, I wanted to let you know, um, I do shop on Atmex. I will be making me a purchase today so I can keep up with the monthly uh, purchase of precious metals. I do. Um, I've said I want to go 12 for 12 this month or this year, and um, I'm on pace to doing that. So today I will be making a purchase over here um, on this exchange. This is one of my favorite exchanges. I don't get paid to promote them, but, you know, I always like to put, out there um, for the new folks that are into precious metals hey if there's a precious metal exchange that you like that is um, good um, let me know in the description I like to shop all over the place for precious metals and look at different type of um, materials so um, let me know I also like Scott Dale's mint as well they got some cool um, materials as well so um, yeah just go over here and check it out um, right now at 2803 and 1911 funny that we were talking about that on the channel today to get to this point and see that um, but in, you know you got gold um, you could go to the available products and then you got silver same thing um, and you go down here for the junk silver and then you got um, currency and other um, stuff like that and the copper 
got platinum palladium and again palladium is at twenty eight hundred sixty seven dollars platinum eleven ninety two and that's pretty much it guys i just uh, hope that you guys got something out of it today i know it wasn't your typical video and i kind of was stuttering all over the place but you know forgive me um, we're getting used to it we're getting better at uh, communicating uh, some of the information so um, stick by stand by and we'll continue to evolve um, with our knowledge as far as um, how we move um, towards uh, financial freedom and security. So anyway, I wanted to end with this quote from JFK. And as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. And folks, we want to be the best people we can be. We want to treat people um, the way we want to be treated. So, you know, always, uh, you know, be kind, um, open up a door for someone, you know, and help them out. Um, if you see someone struggling, try to help them out. It, it doesn't necessarily mean financial. It always means, you know, hey, hi, how are you or, or whatnot. Those things are important because, you know, we never know what another human being is going through um, because we all go through things and we all need to be individuals to um, make sure that we allow, uplift, um, you know, our human counterparts. So I wanted to leave with that quote, um, especially on the hills of a Memorial Day. All right, guys, this is it uh, for the video. Have a great weekend. Try to do something fun new and exciting. If you're going to grill out, you know, be safe. If you're going to, you know, party, um, things like that, you know, always be safe. Protect those around you. Be safe around those people um, with you. And uh, make sure you continue to take care of those um, that you love the most. Whether it you know, be your parents, or whether it be your children, brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, um, pets, things like that. You know, make sure you're always keeping a close eye out on those and keep your head on the swivel. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. And uh, we'll be back on Monday. God bless. Take care. And as always, treat everyone with class, dignity, and respect. Bye-bye.